Hello, a very good morning. So let's continue with our structure uh, essay questions for organic chemistry for chapter four, which is about halo alkane. Okay. So uh, with that session, let's do it. Okay, so uh, today we're going to discuss about essay question for the uh, section organic chemistry for halo alkane. Okay. And these are the questions. Number one, uh, boiling point of isomer with the formula C4H9Br described in the table below. So you have a one bromoglutane with the boiling point 75.2, two bromoglutane with the boiling point 64.9, and you have a two, two bromo two methyl propane with the uh, boiling point, let me see how much I can see that. <laughs> 41.6, okay. So uh, what makes them so different in terms of the boiling point, even they have the same molecular structure, uh, molecular mass. So this is due to definitely the total surface area of the molecule, okay? So we say is that um, boiling point increased from this compound from 2 bromo 2 methyl propane to 2 bromo butane to 1 bromo butane. This is due to straight chain has a greater total surface area while branch chain has a less total surface area. Therefore, the strength of the weak metal wall forces is greater when you have a greater total surface area. So usually this is how you are going to answer for the uh, for the points of uh, how do you use for the total surface area in here. Then we continue with number B. All isomers above undergoes hydrolysis to sodium hydroxide under reflux. One, arrange and explain the rate of hydrolysis for the isomer. So how are you going to, uh, how are you going to explain the rate of hydrolysis generally? So we say that uh, a tertiary haloalkane is the easiest to undergo hydrolysis followed by secondary followed by primary. Yeah? Okay, so in another word, the tertiary halalkane will have the highest rate of reactions in here. So why? This is due to uh, CCL cleavage is easier for tertiary halalkane since it is more, uh, it has a greater steric effect compared to a primary than a secondary. Okay, so that is why uh, the easiness to undergo hydrolysis is the easiest for a tertiary halalkane. Okay, so uh, this is generally how you answer. But let's say if the question asks about SN1 and SN2 mechanism, then especially when they ask about SN2 mechanism, then the order is the otherwise. So when they ask about SN2 mechanism, a primary haloalkane is the easiest to undergo hydrolysis compared to a secondary than a tertiary, which is the most difficult to undergo SN2. But looking at the way of how this question is asked, this question is asking generally uh, compared to primary, secondary, tertiary haloalkane, which one is the easiest to undergo uh, hydrolysis? So we will definitely say it's a tertiary haloalkane, which is the easiest to undergo hydrolysis, okay? So that is how you answer for question 1B, 1B1. Then you have 1B2. Using CCH3Br, describe the mechanism of the hydrolysis and explain the effect of increasing concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So now, only in question 2, they ask you to specifically describe the mechanism of the hydrolysis and explain the effect of increasing the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So only here you are using either SN1 and SN2. So since it is a tertiary haloalkane, then you are going to use SN1 mechanism. Okay, where the general reactions for the hydrolysis you must be able to write. So it's CH3CBr plus NaOH under reflux. So if CH3COH plus NaBr, then you start to describe the mechanism. So in step one is the formation of the carbocation, and you must include the arrow for each of the reactions in here. So you have heterolytic fission take place uh, between the CBr in here to form a tertiary carbocation, which is the most stable. Okay, and this is a slow step, sir. Huh? Then step two is uh, followed by how does the nucleophile, the OH minus, attacks the uh, carbocation in here to form your uh, products in here. So these are the three marks for the uh, mechanisms, usually uh, how we describe them. So you, then definitely you must write the rate equation because the next you are going to explain the effect of increasing concentration of sodium hydroxide. So the rate equation rate is equals to KCH33CBR. So from the rate equations in here, you can see that OH- minus is not involved in the um, rate determining steps. Therefore, concentration of NaOH will not affect the rate of reaction. So uh, as is why? So as it's not involved in the rate determining slow steps. So this is how you are going to answer for the eight marks for uh, 
the mechanism of the tertiary hala alkane and how you are going to explain the effect of the increasing concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So with that, that is for question number one. Then we have question number two. An optical active alcohol produces compound Y on dehydration. Y react with bromine in tetrachloromethane to produce compound Z, which has the composition by mass of carbon 22.2%, hydrogen 3.7%, and bromine 74.1%. One, determine the empirical formula for Z. So in here, you have to use the uh, uh, usual tables to calculate the empirical formula where you have uh, atom, mass, mole, and ratio. So uh, from here, you can see that the ratio of the CHBR here is 2 to 4 to 1. Okay, so uh, empirical formula for the Z is C2 to H4 to R. Then number two, what is the most slightly molecular formula for Z? Give one reason for your answer in here. Now, if you look carefully at all the steps described above, a Z is formed when bromine reacts with compound Y. So Y is actually a product of dehydration from X. So Y is expected to be an alkene. So when it is an alkene, so the maxima are most probably the bromine that is formed here is a dibromine compound. Because when you can you imagine when you have a diene, diene will have more than uh, four C already. If you have four C, the number of H will followed by uh, H sixteen. So C A H sixteen is almost impossible for a diene because you also have Br four at the same time. So that is why we can strongly deduce that the alkene in here is a monounsaturated alkene. Therefore, the bromine form in here is a dibromo alkene. So suggested molecular formula in here is C4HABR2. So why? This is due to Jack is the product, product of the addition reaction of bromine to alkene Y. Or simply you said two atoms of bromine is needed to add to one C double bond C or monounsaturated alkene. Then number three, suggest with reason the structural formula for X, Y, Z. Every time when you see such question that's highlighted, optically active, so make sure that you use a highlighter or use a, a pen and ruler to highlight the word optical active. Okay, so in here, since the formula is C4, so it is suggested that X is a, a hydrocarbon atom, so you have two bromo butano, uh, two uh, butan 2O, sorry, you have a butan 2O. And then when you have butan to O, Y will be put to in, and Z will be 2, 3, dibromol butan. So this is how we are going to deduce based on the uh, deductions uh, that we give based on the questions in here. So this is how we are going to solve for 2A. As for 2B, one chlorobutane, chlorobenzene, and ethanol chloride CH3COCl can undergo hydrolysis under the suitable condition. One, write equation for each hydrolysis. So in here, especially for uh, chlorobenzene, you require extreme conditions to undergo hydrolysis in here. So how are the differences in the hydrolysis? Let's have a look at the equations in here. So for one chlorobutane, it is just simply NaOH under reflux, where you have uh, CH3, CH2, 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 CL plus NaOH under reflux. You form a butan 1O plus NaCl. For chlorobenzene, uh, ethanol chloride, you simply react with water under room temperature. In this case, if you write reflux, then the answer will be wrong because uh, for the hydrolysis take, take you, for the hydrolysis to take place for ethanol chloride, all you have to use is only water. Whereas for chlorobenzene, uh, chlorobenzene, so for chlorobenzene, you require high temperature, high pressure. Now, do you really have to specifically state 300 degrees Celsius and 200 atmosphere? Actually, no need. Just simply state high temperature, high pressure is enough to solve this. So you form the uh, OHCl in here. But actually, by right, uh, you are not forming OHCl. You're forming uh, phenoxide ion, all minus Cl plus minus, uh, all minus and HCl in here. Okay. Never mind, we are going to go to the final product, which is the product for the phenol. Okay? okay, number two, compare the rate of hydrolysis of this chloro compound. So definitely, uh, chlorobenzene will be ha we have the lowest rate, while uh, ethanol chloride will have the highest rate. So the order of the rate of hydrolysis will go like this. You have a chlorobenzene followed by one chlorobutane followed by ethanol chloride. So why is this so? 
this is due to the chlorobenzene has delocalized electron in the benzene ring, which shortened the CCL bond. So if, if as a student, I would definitely advise you all to write a more complete answer. So when chlorine uh, chloro, uh, when chlorobenzene delocalized electron in the benzene ring, this will cause the CCL bond is shortened, hence harder to dissociate. Whereas for ethanol chloride, why ethanol chloride will have the highest rate of reaction? It is due to the inductive effect caused by the C double bond O, which makes the dissociation of CCL to become much easier, therefore the easiest to undergo hydrolysis. So usually this is how I suggest students, you all to answer on the hydrolysis of the chloro compounds in here. Okay, so uh, try to explain and describe as fully as you can. Okay, with that, that is how you solve for question number two. Then we continue with question number three. Okay, as for question number three, the reaction energy profile for the reaction between optical active haloalkane X with the molecular formula C5H11Cl and the solution of alcoholic potassium cyanide is shown below. So this is the energy profiles in here. As you can see from the energy profile, it has two loops in here. Two loops indicates what? Two loops indicates that this reaction has two steps. And what are the reactions that have two steps in here? It is definitely SN1. And do take notes in here. The question already says that it must be optically active color alkane. So uh, for a SN1 mechanism, definitely it favor a tertiary alcohol. However, a tertiary alcohol, uh, sorry, tertiary color alkane. However, for a tertiary color alkane, uh, you cannot, we cannot have a molecular formula which is optically active. Therefore, we shall move to the second one, which is a secondary haloalkane. Only if under secondary haloalkane, we can have an optical active haloalkane. So the suggested structural formula and the mechanism is SN1, and the secondary haloalkane here is a 2 chloropentane. Then making use of the 2 chloropentane, you are going to describe the mechanism of the SN1 mechanism. So SN1 mechanism takes two steps. So two steps in here will be step one where you have the uh, 2 chloropentane uh, first undergoes homolytic fission. Okay? So this is the slow step. You form tertiary, uh, you form a carbocation in here, secondary carbocation. And then the secondary carbocation is followed by the attack of the cyanide ions to form the desired products in here. So usually uh, in here, uh, we recommend students to write slow step, fast step, the carbocation, even the full products in here in order to, uh, in order to score maximum marks in here. And we also suggest students to write an asterisk and the carbons which is optically active to show that it is a chirocarbon uh, atoms in here. Okay, so this is how you are going to score the six marks for 3A. Then we continue with 3B. What is the effect on the rate of reaction if iodine in the haloalkane is replaced by bromine and haloalkane then react with alcoholic potassium cyanide? To explain your answer. So, uh, rate of reaction increased as CCL is replaced by CI as the bond length of CI is longer than CCL, therefore decrease the bond strength. Therefore, the rate of reaction is higher for that case. Okay? B. Parachromobenzoic acid was used in the textile industry in 1970. Propose a reaction scheme to show how a parachromobenzoic acid uh, can be formed starting from benzene. Okay? So, uh, starting from benzene, Okay, so uh, you have uh, reagent conditions, uh, okay? So starting from benzene, okay, so you first form a chlorobenzene. Uh, chlorobenzene. Then from chlorobenzene, because you, they want a para position, isn't it? So you have to synthesis using a CH3Cl in LCL3 to form a para chlorine. So from the part of, from a para chlorine, you undergo uh, oxidations, which is a uh, KMN04 to form your desired product of COH. Uh, sorry, a typing error in here. Uh, you know by yourself that this is a COH. Uh, so I can, can I draw a while so here. So this is supposedly to be COH. Okay. Okay, so this is the desired product here. Okay. So with that, that is the very simple. Uh, steps to show how you can produce the products in here okay 
Okay, with that, that is how you answer for question number three. And finally, we go to question number four. So for question number four, a volatile halal organ, organic compound P has a boiling point of 313 Kelvin and a composition by mass carbon 14.1, hydrogen 2.4, and chlorine 83.5. One, determine the empirical formula for the compound P. So you use the uh, tables below, uh, tables as shown in here, to so get the empirical formula as CH2Cl2. Okay. Then number two, calculate a uh, 0.100 gram of liquid compound P is injected into a syringe whose temperature is maintained at uh, how many Kelvin? 350 Kelvin. In equilibrium state, the volume of the vapor in the syringe is 34.2 centimeter cube and its pressure is 100 kilopascal. Calculate the relative molecular mass of X has determined its molecular formula. So you have to use PV equals to NRT. So you substitute all. So don't forget uh, 100 kilopascal is 100 times 3, times 10 power of 3. Then your volume must be in cent uh, meter cube. So from centimeter cube to meter cube, you have to time 10 power of negative 6. So you get 3.42 times 10 power of negative 5. Then 0 0.100 gram of the compound divided by the molar mass to multiply with 8.31 and 350. So at the end of the day, your molecular mass in here is 85. So 85, after you do some calculation, you eventually get your N is equals to 1. Therefore, the molecular formula in here is CH2Cl2. Then number three, compound X and a few other organic compounds are formed when equivalent amount of CH4 and Cl2 react with the presence of sunlight. Write the molecular formula of other organic compounds that is possible. So two marks in here. So in here, you are undergoing a free radical substitution reactions. So in the free radical substitution reaction, there are many possible products that can be formed in here. Either you write forming chloro, chloro, propane, uh, chloromethane, sorry. Either you write uh, chloromethane, trichloromethane, all of them are possible in here, okay? So uh, in here, either if you get the correct answer, then you'll be uh, just correct byproducts in here, then you'll be able to get your desired marks in here, okay? So that is how you're going to score for question number 4A. And then 4B, state one uh, use of dichlorodichloromethane, CF, CCL2, CF2, we have a boiling point of 303 Kelvin. Explain how the use of compound is related to its property. So uh, one of the use is you can use as refrigerant, you can use as aerosol propellant can, or you can use it, even use as a fire extinguisher. So if you say a uh, refrigerant, you must say that it has a high vol volatility and non-toxic. Okay. So uh, of course there are many other uses. So you can check on to my uh, YouTube to find out any other uses. Uh, carbon. Then we have number two. Explain how dichlorodichloromethane will affect the ozone layer in the stratosphere using suitable equations for the reactions involved. Yeah. So uh, dichlorodichloropropane uh, methane will uh, deplete the ozone layer okay, or cause the ozone layer to be thinner. So uh, you have to use the mechanisms uh, to describe this where the initiation starts with the uh, formation of the free radical. So under ultraviolet, you form a chlorine radical and the propagation steps, the chlorine radical will attack the ozone to form um, oxochloro radical and oxygen. And the oxochloro radical will react with the oxygen atom to form a chlorine radical so with oxygen back. And you have to write the overall equations in here. O3 plus O give 2 O2. Okay. Okay, so with that, I believe that is all for the questions for this chapter. So uh, if you have any question, please leave it on the comments and I'll try my best to reply as soon as we can. So I guess that is all for chapter 4. Now next lesson, we shall immediately start with chapter 5. Okay, so with that, that is all for the lesson today. So see you around. Thank you.